Got this Fetters air conditioner. It's 12,000 BTU. So two model. I noticed the fan was seized up in it, or semi seized. It wasn't spinning. It's taken a good two pounds to turn that pound. So I'm gonna take it apart, pull that fan out, and grease it, put it back together. The model number, model number is A6T12F2A. The first thing I did was take the air filter out of it, and there's two screws, one on each corner inside where the air filter slides down to get the front cover and snap it out of here, and I think it kind of locks on the sides here a little bit. So then I took all the screws out of the cabinet, there's two on top, three down to each side in the front, two on each side in the front, and one diagonal in the corners in the back. It's got some kind of, the fuzz is wanting to stick to it, so you'll have to baby it off of there. If the fuzz starts sticking to it, you'll have to break it up so it don't tear your fuzz all up. nest or two in there. Alright. Well, there's what I'm going for is that motor. The bearings is seized up on it. Either it's got bushings or bearings. I don't know which yet. Good opportunity to shop back the crap out of it before it rots the coils clear out. And clean the condenser off. Yeah, it's going to stick around. This motor isn't available anymore, apparently. Good opportunity to clean it up real good, though. I'm going to go ahead and Chop back some of this trash out of here. Okay, I took the quarter inch screws out of this brace plate going across the center. The screws actually run into the styrofoam. And there's 11 millimeter cap nuts holding this plastic down. And then a quarter inch screw on each corner. Hold the plastic down. And two of these cat nuts. Remove the two condenser screws holding the condenser to the cabinet. You may need some more screws if you're like this one. Short ones. Little stubby condenser quarter inch coarse threaded screws. Condenser is a little loose now. Move the plastic back past the fan blade. Now all the condenser lines are on the other side and I stuffed a, a shop rag underneath the tubes just to keep them from getting damaged in this corner. Just lifting the condenser up. Might as well shop back the trash out of there. If that'll, with any luck, I'll let this, I mean, pick this side of the condenser up, let it hinge so I can get in there and deal with that fan blade and get some maneuvering room. Set the, set a tube of four behind the condenser and move the condenser back on it. And keep your pressure focused on that big, big line hooked, hooked to the compressor. You could probably loosen the compressor up if you really wanted to. Get this back now. This has a 
split end on the center of this fan and the short part has a hook on it. There was supposed to be a metal clip on there which it was laying on the bottom. I'll probably put a I'll put something on it to lock it down. I sprayed WD-40 into that to help it loosen up. It may need some time to soak. That hook ought to be lifted up and then the shaft has a notch on it for that hook to set in. Take this fan off of the condenser side. Now I clamped vice grips on the shaft on the back side. I stuck a screwdriver and lifted this flap up in the front and I held the vice grips and worked the fan back and forth and got it moving on the shaft. Then I stuck a screwdriver against the vice grips in the center of the shaft against the fan and then twist it out on the screwdriver while kind of pulling on the fan hub. That's got it moving. It's going to come right on off of there now after spraying penetrating oil on it. That'll give me a little more clearance to get the motor out. Hopefully it don't run the shaft through the condenser back here. That came off pretty good. Look at that. Holding the weight of them vice grips up, that's how stuck the motor is. That motor should should just coast. I just been through years of weather. Looks like a bushing maybe. I don't know, we'll see. If you're inclined to, you can take this fan shot up out of there. Just don't forget to put it back in there. It's a different animal now. Okay, I'm going to remove the fresh air vent. I'll take these three screws out. I went ahead and taken the other screws out of this plate. A little hook here catches it. Yeah, you gotta handle all this like a spider web or something. Be real delicate or you'll tear this thing up. This thing needs clean. This one still has a clamp on it. not to bend these fins this is where your cold air comes from now I'll get in there and work on this wheel too thing's really got a bite on it Let's say this plastic divider will come out of here. Let's don't tear the styrofoam up. I'll go ahead and take this divider up out of there. Okay, this plastic divider had a hook deal keeping it down. Then it had a pin sticking out, and you have to push that pin in and then lift it off the hook. So, that gave me a pretty big hole there to deal with. I get that lower wheel off of there. All that needs bleached anyway and cleaned off. I was real careful and lifted that bump up while pulling on this wheel, working it back and forth and I got the bump over that notch so now it's just a matter of getting the wheel off that rusty shaft. The penetrating oil worked well. Uh, the only thing you got to worry about is the is, uh, evaporator because that wheel will probably put up a fight right to the end and then come flying at the evaporator. But just working it side to side and pulling on it gets it moving.
It's a coming. I'm sticking a screwdriver. That's kind of like half cut out hole. I'm sticking a screwdriver against that half cut out and pushing it against the shaft. Turning the screwdriver sideways and wiggling it left and right. And I sprayed a little more lube on it. It's, that's doing a real good job. Just acting like a puller, pushing against that cap, against the shaft. Like that. had a spring clamp on the center of it. I used a pair of needle nose to open it up and slide it off the shaft and run a screwdriver through this ring and let up on it and it'll snap off on this pretty good sized screwdriver so you don't just don't go flying through the air and hit you in the eye or just hit you in the face some. Now I've got the front open I can take the motor out the back with any luck. Went ahead and took the screw out of this wire retainer, holding the wires up. This metal plate there. The bottom of it slides in a slot, and then this screw holds it on top. So I'll be able once I get the motor out, I'll push the wires around through here and work on the motor over here on the side and just leave it hooked up. I need to take these mounting screws out of. The, I'll just take that hole. Looks like three eighths, three three eighths bolts holding that motor assembly on there. I got all the bolts loose. They're out. Took the bottom one out. Be sure to support your motor. I need the last ones out because it's going to drop like a rock. It's pretty heavy. There's a the jewel there. Offhand, I wrote a yellow T for top on the motor and the bells. So I'll be able to put it back the way it came. The wires are still hooked up. I'm going to clean this shaft up and hit it with some 320 sandpaper. There's a cardboard washer on here that needs to come out. Maybe one on the other side of it. Just have to wash for stuff like that. Clean this shaft up before I pull this bell off of it. Just the side of the motor up. And tear any more of it up and what it already tore up. Mark your top on this plate and go ahead and take these 11 30 seconds nuts off this metal plate. Then start taking the bell off. Bell quarter inch bolts on the other side off. Top and motor side. Top motor side. Got some stands backing it up. Offsets on this plate. Have a wire brush and sandpaper to shaft up pretty smooth so it won't be much of a fight. I'm going ahead and taking these quarter inch screws out of the bell. Four studs that holds the motor together and mounts it. These are nuts and then 11-30 seconds holds that mounting plate on to the, these studs. 